Namaste, hello and welcome back to another video on Hum Sabahidi Vajra Astra. I'm Ohuna and as you must have guessed, this is going to be my TBR Compile of Possibilities video for the March Mystery Madness 2023. Now this is a much awaited readathon and I'm quite excited uh, to dive into reading mysteries once again. And um, March Mystery Madness this year has been hosted by... Now, the only requirement for participation is that we read one mystery book. So I do have a very small TBR, but I have a huge pile of possibilities. So I'll be taking you through them. So do please join me further in this video. Now, um, the theme for uh, this year's March Mystery Madness, as I mentioned before, is spring cleaning and there are four prompts. Now, the first I'll first take you through the prompts. So the first prompt is uh, messy or gritty, wherein the protagonist uh, detective is messed up. The second prompt is lather, wherein uh, the cop or the detective or the um, city or the um, a detective agency is trying to clean up a mess or um, try to remove a particular gangster who has been creating havoc etc and uh, the third is um, rinse which uh, does take the classical side or the cozier side and the fourth is repeat now um, one of the uh, challenges of the hosts who is Elizabeth from Lizzie Fay Loves Books is to read a mystery which has uh, spring in its title or cleaning in its title 
So I did find uh, one book, which is uh, part of my TBR, which has this word spring and cleaning on it, and it does fulfill three of the prompts. So uh, this is Antonio Mazzini's uh, Spring Cleaning. So um, this, obviously, the title is Spring and Cleaning, so it goes with the theme of this book. Uh, also, I do apologize, but really light is shining on it. Uh, however, uh, it also pro uh, fulfills prompts number one, prompts number two, as well as prompts number three, uh, because there is a parallel investigation which goes on. So I'll just um, read out the synopsis from the back of the book and also mention when these prompts do uh, come to its tradition within this particular book. So um, the first um, challenge of uh, Elizabeth is, of course, um, spring cleaning. So uh, those words are in the title. Now, uh, from the synopsis, it reads as, Rocco, who is the detective, is still reeling from the death of his uh, best friend's girlfriend. So this uh, fulfills the first prompt, which is, um, Messi or gritty protagonist detective mester and further i'll continue rocco is still reeling from the death of his best friend's girlfriend who was murdered as she slept in rocco's bed there's no doubt that she was in the wrong place at the wrong time and paid the ultimate price with the identity of the hitman still unknown a cloud lingers over rocco dulling his judgment and leaving his anti-hero exposed to other threats. For Rocco has stepped on too many people's toes over the years, namely the mafia gang that is still being rooted out in Eosta. So this um, mafia gang who is being rooted out also uh, fulfills uh, the second prompt, which is Lada, which wherein the detective agency or the police department is trying to um, root out or cleanse the city of a mafia gang. Now, uh, the third prompt, which is uh, to, um, which is, I believe, uh, Rinse, which is to um, read a mystery which is on the cozier side. Cozy means anything which has suspense, which is intrigue, and which is um, on the cozier side of things, of course. So uh, the second parallel investigation comes in picture over here. Uh, so, from the synopsis, it further reads as, To complicate matters, the kidnapped teenager that Rocco saved has not fully recovered, but all is not as it appears in his family. Her father, mother and boyfriend are all running some sort of charade that Rocco can't easily crack. And now he must grapple between the two parallel investigations and find answers once and for all before a few skeletons come after him. With the same clever insights, vitality and humour, we can expect Mazzini's spring cleaning to be another engaging page turner story. So this um, is a brilliant mystery and it did fit in all the prompts. So that's the first book on my TBR. Now the last prompt uh, for this particular readathon is repeat, which means anything which is repetitive so we can interpret in a myriad of ways. Now I have chosen a book which will be on my TBR of course, which is written by Adrian McKinty and it's called The Chain. So this is an Irish mystery and um, it's about uh, the uh, fact that there are um, uh, children who are getting kidnapped and once the parents uh, try to rescue or to relieve their children uh, they are um, directed to kidnap somebody else's child and uh, if they have to free their own child this uh, other um, child who is getting kidnapped will again be in another chain so it's a chain reaction and it's repetitive till the mystery is solved so I did find this very appropriate for the last prompt so this will be the second book on my TBR now let's come around to my pile of possibilities, which is massive. So uh, what I have done is I have chosen uh, a particular series which fits the individual prompts. And uh, I, I'm going to be reading one book per prompt. And once I finish uh, three different books from three different series, which fulfill the prompt, I'll be repeating the same author or the next in the series. Uh, so that will be the repeat um, fulfilled as well. So uh, the first prompt of course is messy or gritty wherein the protagonist detective is messed up. So from my pile of possibilities I've chosen the detective Katie Scott mystery wherein she deals with her PTSD and uh, this has been written by Jennifer Chase. So I have uh, three books in this mysteries. So um, I'm going to be um, talking about the first book in every mystery and followed by the second and the third of course will be if I 
get to it. So, um, uh, but I'm going to try and read the first book in all the series that I've chosen. So, um, the first book is called Little Girl Sleeping. And uh, from the synopsis, it reads as, he, li he looks down at the little girl sleeping peacefully, her arms wrapped around a teddy bear. He knew he was the only one who could save her. He could let her sleep forever. An eight-year-old girl, Chelsea Compton, is missing in Pine Valley, California. And for Detective Katie Scott, it's a crude reminder of the friend who disappeared from summer camp 20 years ago. Unable to shake the memories, Katie vows she won't rest until she discovers what happened to Chelsea. But as Katie starts to investigate, accompanied by her loyal ex-military dog, Cisco, the case reveals itself to be a much bigger and more shocking than she feared. Hidden deep in the forest, she unearths a makeshift cemetery, a row of graves, each with a brightly colored teddy bear. Katie links the graves to a stack of missing person cases involving young girls finding a pattern no one else has managed to see. Someone in the Pine Valley has been taking the town's daughters for years and Katie is the only one who can stop them. So this um, is a very interesting series. This is followed by, of course, uh, the book number two, which is um, her last one whisper and uh, i hope i can get to this one and if i manage to complete that uh, the third will be uh, flowers uh, on her grave so uh, those would be my pile of possibilities for the first prompt now the next um, series which i have is for prompt number two which is lather which uh, wherein the uh, cop or the detective or the city is trying to clean up mess or they're trying to get rid of a mafia group etc so for this i have chosen charles harris's um, uh, mysteries in shakespeare town or which is lily bard mysteries so i have managed to acquire only four of them there are actually five or six of them so i'm going to first try and read only one and once i get into repeat then i'll start with the others so um this is uh, a lily bard mystery as i mentioned and the protagonist here gets entangled in a mess of a murder case and she has to clean up a resolve to prove her innocence so um this is called the first of the series is uh, shakespeare's landlord and uh, from the back the synopsis reads as disguising herself with short hair and baggy clothes lily bard has started a new life and she's becoming a cleaning lady in the sleepy town of shakespeare where she can sweep away the secrets of a dark and violent past. However, her plan to lead a quiet, unobserved life begins to crumble when she discovers the dead body of her nosed or nosy landlord. Lily doesn't care who did, who did it, but when the suspicion of the police and the local community falls on her, she realizes if she doesn't unmask the murderer, her life might not just crumble, it would also end. So um, it seems that um, an innocent cleaning lady is caught up in this mess of a situation so it fit very well and uh, the rest of the series which are following i believe this is book two just give me one moment, please um book two will be Sh uh, shakespeare's champion and I believe I don't have book three, but book four would be uh, Shakespeare's Trollope, which is very interesting. And I just hope that I'll be able to get to this one. And uh, book five is Shakespeare's Counselor. So um, that is the series that I've chosen for prompt number two. Now, the next series for the same prompt, Lather, is a middle grade um, science fiction series, which I'm trying to couple up with um, another readathon that I'll be participating in in uh, the month of March, and that's middle grade March, of course. So this is the uh, Space Murder Mystery Series by Stuart Gibb, and it's a Space Mooney Mystery Series. So here we have uh, the protagonist, Dash, who is... Um, a child who is brought up on the moon and uh, he lives in the moon colony and um, the along with the other children he uh, finds out there is a uh, scientist who has been who's, who was on the brink of um, experimenting something new and he had a secret which he was going to reveal which was very dangerous so um, he died all of a sudden and uh, it seems that it was an accidental death which is what everybody was trying to label and uh, put it off and clean up the entire uh, death as however um, 
Dash discovers that that was not the case and he has to investigate along with his friends to find out whether um, this was an accidental death or was there was he murdered so that's what this book this series is all about and then it goes on with the others so let me first try and get to the first one and we'll go to the next ones now um, there is another series which I'm looking forward to now this is uh, also a um, gothic series and uh, there are approximately five in this series so here it is and um, this is the uh, gem flockhart series which is a gothic historical mystery series and i have been trying to get to this series but i was not able to for quite some time so um the basic um plot of uh, the entire series is uh, apothecary Jem Flockhart who is an observant outsider watches closely and resolves the mysteries uh, which are all hidden um, secrets and they do have hideous crimes involved so she starts resolving these mysteries so I'm just going to read out for the synopsis from the uh, back of the um, of the first um, book which is beloved poison and this has been written by E.S. Thomas of course so uh, from the back it reads as the object I drew out was dusty and mildewed and blotched with dark rust-colored stains. It smelled of time and decay, sour like books and parchments. The light from the chapel stained glass window blushed red upon it, and upon my hands, as if the thing itself radiated a bloody glow. Ramshackle and crumpling, trapped in the past and resisting the future, St. Xavier's infirmary, awaits demolition. Within its stinking wards and cramped corridors, the doctors bicker and fight. Ambition, jealousy and hatred seethe beneath the venture of professional courtesy. Always an outsider and with a secret of her own height, apothecary Jen Flockhart observes everything but says nothing. And then six tiny coffins are uncovered, inside each a handful of dried flowers and a bundle of mouldering rags. When Jen comes across these strange relics hidden inside the infirmary's old chapel, her quest to understand their meaning prizes open a long forgotten past with fatal consequences. So that's the first of the series. Now the next in the series is a uh, dark asylum which is um quite interesting and uh, the third in the series is uh, the blood which is about a ship and the murders which are happening um this ship is actually supposed to be a floating hospital so um it's a very interesting um book the fourth in the series is called surgeon's hall and uh, the fifth is called um nightshade so um i know i may not be able to get through all of them so if i can at least read one i would be happy to continue with the rest in the forthcoming months so uh, that is my um third possibility series now, my next pile of possibilities for the prompt, which uh, is rings, uh, wherein we read uh, those mysteries which are on the classical side or those which are on the cozier side. So I've chosen around uh, three mysteries uh, series. So from the classical side, I have chosen a middle grade mystery series, which is set in classical Victorian London. And this was recommended to me by um, Juan uh, in one of his recommendation videos and this is the Sally Pullman I'm sorry the um, Sally Lockhart mysteries which has been written by Philip Pullman so I'll leave a link to uh, this particular video in the description box below should you want to check this out uh, and um, those would be his opinions on this particular series but I just wanted to um, go to the series as well because it's middle grade so I can couple it up with my middle grade March uh, readathon as well so um, the first in the series is uh, the ruby in the smoke the second in the series is uh, the shadow in the north I believe the third in the series is the tiger in the well which I'm yet to receive and the fourth is the tin princess so uh, I'm going to read out the synopsis from the first in the series and if I can get through the next ones of course I will be reading that as well. So uh, from the back of the book for um, the ruby in the smoke it reads as Sally Lockhart is living quietly in London when she hears news of her father's tragic death at sea and receives the ominous warning he left before he died. Soon Sally is plunged into a terrifying mystery 
in the dark heart of Victorian London. Her journey will take her from the grimy streets of East End to a Maharaja's Indian palace to the decadent opium dens of China. Unraveling the mystery will lead her into a world of danger and excitement to a priceless blood-soaked jewel. So, um, I believe it is quite of an adventure and um, looking forward to coming to this series. Now, the next series which I've chosen for this particular prompt is uh, an Irish village murder mystery series. And there are three in this series which I'm trying to um, get to. Of course, there are seven or eight of them or maybe nine of them. But uh, I'm trying to just uh, get to three of them if I can. So uh, the first is, uh, this is a, written by Carleen O'Connor. And it's an Irish village mystery series. And this is called, Mur the first one is called Murder in an Irish Village. And uh, from the back, the synopsis goes as, murder has a way of killing business. In the village of Kilbane, County Cork, Naomi's Bistro has always been at the heart of the community. Since the death of her parents, Shabohin O'Sullivan has been running things with the help of her five siblings. It's been a rough time for them all, and yet more bad luck is just around the corner. On the arrival at the Bistro early one morning, Shabohin discovers a man seated at the table with a pair of hot pink barber scissors protruding from his chest. The local guarda immediately suspect involvement by the O'Sullivans and it's up to Shibahan to solve the crime. If she can't kill or if she can't find the killer, her beloved bistro and her family's livelihood may not survive either. So this is um, all about business uh, and how um, one murder is going to destroy the entire business. Uh, the next in the series, I believe, is a uh, murder at an Irish wedding, and uh, wherein um, there is um, a wedding which is about to take place, and um, uh, the protagonist's um, fiance or boyfriend actually tries to uh, fill up the space for the best man who was expected to arrive on time but did not. So uh, once uh, he uh, steps up to the position. Uh, his body is discovered in the woods. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, best man's body is discovered in the woods. So there is another murder. And um, the um, our protagonist is actually catering for this particular um, village um, wedding. So she gets involved in it. So uh, she has to resolve it. Otherwise, she will not be able to prove the innocence of herself, her catering company, as well as um, her boyfriend. So, and the third is, I believe, um, uh, Irish, uh, an Irish murder in, the, no, a murder in the Irish churchyard. So um, that goes along the same line wherein um, she is, uh, uh, our protagonist is again involved uh, in a mystery case. So, uh, but here I believe she gets recognized by the uh, police department over there. So um, those are the uh, mysteries that I've chosen for the cozier side. Now, um, there is another audio book which I'll be listening to, which is called uh, The Bookshop Murder, which is uh, a Flora Steel mystery by Marin, Marin Allingham. So um, this is uh, all about a um, very cozy bookshop, uh, which is run by a very um, quiet lady. And suddenly she sees that there is a uh, body which is discovered in her uh, bookshop all of a sudden and um, the case goes on from there. So uh, these are the few uh, series. There's also a Welsh mystery series uh, which uh, I have um, planned on getting to but um, I'm not too sure whether I'll be able to get to that or not but um, these are the three uh, series which I'm possibly going to focus on within my pile of possibilities. So I did mention about the Welsh mystery series as well. So I do have the information in front of me now. I did not have it previously. Uh, I am trying to re uh, listen to this on audiobook. So um, this is the, um, I believe, the West Wales murder mystery, which has been written by P.F. Ford. And um, the first in the series is called A Body on the Beach. And uh, the synopsis reads as, meet your favorite detective. Detective Norman is out of retirement and back on the beat in a rain, rainy Welsh seaside town. Langwell might be short on sunshine, but it's certainly not short on murders. Norman is a bit old fashioned, but is also willing to learn from his band of misfit recruits. He's asked 
to mentor a team of misfits in a sleepy Welsh seaside town. But training has barely begun when a woman's body washes up on the beach at Langwell. It turns out to be a local woman, Kimberly Lawrence, missing for over a week, but her husband didn't report her disappearance. The team's investigation hits a brick wall. No one will talk and every suspect seems to have an alibi. Then the discovery of a missing shoe turns the case on its head. It's going to take all Detective Norman's experience to whip his band of inexperienced misfits into the shape to catch a killer. So, um... This is something which uh, I am really looking forward to. So I'm not too sure whether I'll be able to get to this one, but since it's on audiobook, I might as well finish one of them. Now, one of the series that I did forget to mention, which I am really looking forward to, is a middle-grade series which is set in a dystopian environment. And it's a portrait, uh, City of Embers by uh, Jean Dupro. It's a mystery series, which I just realized, and I do really apologize, my ring light is shining on it, but uh, I'm really looking forward to this portrait. And um, it has not much to do with the spring cleaning theme, but um, yes, it's a mystery series, and um, I just had to include this in my TBR because it's it's also um, in a part of my um, uh, middle grade March readathon. So um, I'm just going to read out the first uh, book and it reads as Ember is the only light in a dark world, but now its lamps are beginning to flicker. The city of Ember was built as a last refuge for the human race. 200 years later, supplies are running low and terrifying blackouts are sweeping through the city. It's only a matter of time before the lights go out and never come back on again. When Lena finds part of a secret message, she's sure it holds a clue that will save Ember. She enlists her friend Dune. And together they explore long forgotten parts of their dying city as they race to solve the mystery. If they succeed, they will have to convince everyone to follow them into the danger. But if they fail, the lights will burn out and the darkness will close in forever. So this is the first in the series. And um, the second in the series is um, The People of Sparks. And um, the third in the series is The Diamond of Darkhold. And the fourth in the uh, series is The Prophet of um, Yonwood and uh, I hope that uh, I can get to this series because it's really really interesting and uh, although it's an old series but I've not read it I've just stumbled across it so looking forward to reading this one. So those are the few books that I plan on getting to and completing uh, for March Mystery Madness. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know if you have read any of these mysteries and uh, uh, also your opinion on them. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. So um, with that, I'll be wrapping up this video. I'll see you soon next week again with another video. So till then, take care, have a good reading week ahead and namaste.